Joining me uh, is uh, retired Air Vice Marshal Sean Bell. Sean, great to see you as always. Um, so, so let's touch on this, uh, this issue of dwindling supplies of, of uh, ammunition more broadly. H how big a concern is that for Ukraine? Ammunition has been uh, inevitably quite topical, even though it's um, relatively simple. But I guess it's a vital part of any battlefield at the moment. And, and trying to get behind the story a bit is the, the key issue here. If we look at some of the statistics, America has donated over a million uh, rounds of the artillery since the start of the conflict. Um, but the challenge is that the production that its industry can provide is less than a tenth of that. So it will take some years for it to recoup. And even if it surges that industry, we're still looking for several years before it can recover that those war stocks, and that's before you provide anything else to Ukraine in the coming year. Um, now, why has this shortfall come about? Well, the West had never anticipated that there'd be a war of this scale, of this duration, of this ferocity to happen in Europe anytime soon. And all of your defence planning assumptions were based on much smaller conflicts, much, more, uh, much smaller in size and scale and ferocity, and therefore war stocks that should have lasted for years actually are only lasting for weeks, and in some cases only in, in terms of days. The Russia's mode of operation here, it's a 20th century warfare, they have a year's worth of artillery rounds because that's how they fight. They've been using 20,000 rounds of artillery a day. They don't care about the devastation that's wreaked behind them, whereas Ukraine uh, is a much smaller country, has much smaller stocks of this ammunition, and it's quite difficult for the West to source Russian artillery rounds. So part of this is uh, making sure that Ukraine is properly furnished, but also um, because uh, it's not just about the artillery rounds it's also about the equipment that fires them and you need to provide spare support and stuff like that and bluntly the west has not always provided the most modern equipment to ukraine and therefore there is quite a sustainment tell that's associated with that well, so, so is there about a separate issue about replacing uh, or, or just giving in the first instance the kind of more complicated equipment not just the the ammunition Definitely. What the West does not want us to do is for Ukraine to be dragged into a slugging match, a grinding uh, war of attrition on the ground. So the West, which fights 21st century warfare using precision weapons uh, and, and the like, is aiming to reduce collateral damage, reduce the um, implications for lives for soldiers and particularly for civilians. Um, and that's what we provide to Ukraine. Ukrainian support has been, it's been decisive because not only they've stopped the Russian advance, but they've actually managed to push the Russians back. But the supply is limited. And we'll use a couple of examples here of, of why it's limited. This is the US um, uh, guided multi-launch rocket system that um, the Americans provided to Ukraine. Uh, it's got, they've been hitting about 400 targets uh, uh, a month um, and not only do they provide the equipment, they provide the rockets as well. Now at the moment they've handed over that many in a year. Their industry is able to provide about that same number a year so it's sustainable and if industry was to surge it's about double the number. So this is a sustainable way of supporting Ukraine. However if you look at Javelin, which is another example, that's a, an American anti-tank uh, weapon. The Americans provided 8,500 of these during the war, and they've stopped providing them now because their war stocks have got to a level which the Americans are worried it will compromise their ability to do wars elsewhere. This is the level that industry can provide. It'll take a decade to build up, and even if they surge, we're talking about, about many years. I was just going to say very quickly, the, the US keeps what level back in, in the US? Ten times this amount that they've given it's away? It's very difficult. It, the levels of war stock are intensely secret because they're all based on rates of effort and how much you're going to keep in the, uh, uh, available for a war. What we do know, though, is that it's very unusual for the Americans to stop providing support. This has hit a critical number, but mm -hmm. it's also aware, that even in the UK, we gave 10,000 NLAW missiles, which are anti-tank. The key message here, though, bluntly, is uh, uh, Russia has put its industry onto a war footing. At the moment, NATO and the UK are simply opening the cupboard, seeing what's there and providing it. Eventually, NATO will have to find a more sustainable model together with industry to provide Ukraine with the quantity and the quality of material it needs to win this war. Sean, fascinating uh, as always. Thanks so much.